I feel like I'm getting ready to do a magic show or something with all these bits I'm going out here. <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> right. Almost there. I'm not getting. Do you need to switch the... Uh, give me a sec. Yeah, 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 it's cool. <sighs> does it see anything right now? It does, right? No, it's not coming up. Okay. But it should be. Oh, but you were waiting until the next year. Yeah, give me a second. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, I'm working. That's good. Um, so we've got a long session now. Uh, we're going to be doing a workshop on LM bits and LNURL as well. So LNURL is in there because we use LNURL quite a lot in LM bits. Um, so I'll have a brief explain as to what LNURL is a little bit in the, the talk workshop. Bear with me. Um, so LM bits is a free and open source account wallet system which was built out of necessity. Um, I like making these hardware projects. And quite often, when I would make one of these hardware projects, such as a point of sale or an ATM, I would have to have lots of different implementations for all the different nodes which existed. So Eclair and C-Lightning and LND, and then also for OpenNode and LMPay. Um, and what I needed was some sort of middleware software so I could just build something for a standard API, and then underneath that piece of software, it would connect to a funding source. So in the immediate term, it was solving that problem, um, how to just have something which I could just build for, and then all the funding source connection stuff was kind of taken care of for me. So that's originally where I kind of came up uh, with the, the idea of Alan Bits. Um, and then also we had a point of sale running in the iconic bar in Berlin, room 77, and there was a bunch of things which they wanted. They wanted to be able to like, have tags on payments so they knew you know, what people were buying, uh, what these incoming transactions were to their node so they could um, pay their taxes. Um, so that was another use case which sort of needed to exist for this middleware piece of software. So I started this thing, Alan Bits, and then thankfully uh, these great developers then piled into the project because they also saw a use case for it and could see that it would be useful for other people. Um, and then we were also keen, it was me and my mates who were messing around with this, you know, lightning stuff. They were also keen on having a, a, an easy way to add additional functionality. So we wanted an extension framework where we could add this additional functionality and then other people could make use of it. Um, so, you know, earlier on I would make like a, um, an LNURL withdraw faucet project which people could use on the internet, but they would have to like run that piece of software and then they would have to download the software, run it, connect it to their node, blah, blah, blah. Whereas with LM bits it meant that with S, if that project were an extension, uh, if someone's already got LM bits running on their node, all they need to do is just click, yes, please, I would like to, you know, 
um, add this extension to, to my, uh, my software stack. So it's a free and open source wallet account system with an extension framework built on top of it. Um, as a wallet and account system, another idea which we were kind of coming at with the project was that uh, there's some custodial solutions for Lightning, because Lightning is, you know, Bitcoin as cash. You can use it as we've all been using it for the, the Bitcoin beer tap or whatever else. Um, uh, it's a, it's a, 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 a cash payment solution, um, but, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought for a second. Uh, it's a cash payment solution, but, uh, um, uh, it's gone, it's fluttered away. Um, so well, I'll, just go, I'll just go into the, 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 the software itself, shall I, as, 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 as it stands. So if you go to allenbits.com, there's a, a brief overview of the, the software and how it runs. Um, and then all the, also the different frameworks in which we're using to run the software. So we have a Python backend framework. We decided to use Python because it's you know, less scary for developers and contributors who want to contribute to the project. And I think that was a good call because uh, we've had a lot of great comp contributions to the project. Um, but if I go to the, the Legend demo server here, this is what you'll see if you run LM bits on your own node. Um, ah, that's what I was going to say before. It's the, the Uncle Jim model where you can become a custodian to your friends, family, to the whole world if you want to. And it makes being a custodian of uh, a Lightning service easier. Uh, so the idea was that if you only have a few custodians, such as OpenNode or LMPE, then they're kind of third parties which can be attacked by regulations. Whereas if you make it a lot easier to set up a custodian service, then, uh, and trivial to set up a custodian service, then more people will do it, which will make regulators, give regulators a harder time to be able to, uh, to be able to, yeah, to be able to attack it. So if you run LM bits on your node, which with a Raspberry Blitz or a MyNode or an Umbrella, it's a one click, you know, yes, I would like to run this thing, please. And then it just runs. This is the page you'll see. And then uh, you can restrict access. So maybe only you use LM bits for yourself. Um, and then make use of the extensions. Or uh, you can give access to your friends and family, so you can limit access to just a number of accounts. And that's quite nice, like the Uncle Jim model, uh, particularly when you know, running a node is still kind of a hard thing to do, and setting up channels and balancing channels for a Lightning node is still kind of a hard and expensive thing to do. Then uh, this is a nice solution if you want your friends and family to have access to that infrastructure. Uh, but you don't want them to rely upon somebody else's service. Uh, or you can run it for the whole world if you really want to. Oh, what's happened there? We've gone, gone dark here. No. Let's try. Let's take them in and out again. New. I didn't touch anything, so it should work. Um, but you can also use LM bits uh, as part of your stack as well. So if you're uh, building a payment solution um, or a lightning service, and you, uh, you will inevitably be exposed to all the vulnerabilities which everyone who builds one of those sort of services is exposed to, you know that with LM bits, we've had a demo server running in the wild for a few years. We've been attacked um, by every known vulnerability you can have on a lightning payment service. Uh, so you know that there's some hardening there. It's a very important point to, uh, to make that we, um, uh, that, 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 that uh, it is still in beta. So, you know, we hope to come out of beta at some point, but we are still in beta. So use it with, with caution. Uh, but more and more services now are using it as part of their stack just to take out some of that heavy lifting when it comes to, you know, generating invoices, and then paying invoices, checking to see if they're being paid, and then also managing a user account system, which you can do through LM bits. Now, it's a shame that we can't get it up on screen here. Let me have a little look. Nothing your side now? Just dead? Let's see if we can fit around with some wires here. No. Nope. Well, how about I demo some hardware while we're trying to work this out? Oh, no. No, 
Okay. Um, I will need the screen because I'm going to be the workshop sort of relies upon having the, the screen working to show the software. Um, but for now, I suppose I could show you some of the, the different hardware solutions uh, which we've built around Alambits. Um, so, uh, as I said, I like building hardware, and because we have these great extent this great extension framework, it makes building hardware a lot easier. Um, one of the pieces of hardware which I've recently worked on is this Bitcoin switch project, which um, allows for you to have an LNURL pay, which is this QR code here, and if I scan it and pay it with my wallet, is there any AV people we can get up here to try and get this thing working? Sorry. If we scan and pay this here, this cheap little toy from, um, uh, I think I bought it from Tiger for like a tenner. Uh, inside of it, it's just a, there's obviously a switch to be able to turn the thing on. But then if I make a lightning payment to that QR code, oh, there we are. You'll see that the, 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 the toy turns on quite quickly and then you can play the game to, you know, try and get some stamps or something. So the way, in we, the way in which that works is I have an LMBit server running, and we have an extension, uh, which I should show you in, in a moment, um, an extension where, which has a web socket connected to this device. So there's a little tiny microcontroller inside of there, which is uh, made a web socket to the server, and then when a payment is made, it just sends that something's been paid to the device, and then the device turns on straight away. So you can see it's very quick, uh, very quick to activate. If any of you have been joining the Bitcoin Beer Tap out there, um, we'll also have a Beer Tap uh, project using the same hardware and software as this. And the actual uh, microcontroller which I'm using inside of here is just one of these little ESP32s. So these are about three quid, and then this little relay here attached to it is about 50p or something. Um, so it's a very cheap thing to retrofit anything to accept Bitcoin Lightning payments. Oh, well done, sir. No, it works, it works. Magic. Thank you. <laughs> Round of applause to that gen right there. <laughs> what did you do, just in case it happens again? Yeah, Oh, okay. Maybe I kicked it. Oh, I'll keep my feet away from it. All right, okay. So uh, if we make a wallet in here, um, so this is our demo server. Uh, then here's my wallet. And then in order to be able to get access to this wallet again, uh, I just have to bookmark this wallet. Currently, as I said, we're in beta. We don't have a, a legacy login system, but that's something which we are going to be working on in the next few weeks or month. So we will have like a legacy, save this wallet, blah, blah, blah. And then this information won't be so easy to, um, to dox over the, with an over-the-shoulder attack. But in this, in this wallet, which is completely responsive, so we can, you know, it works on mobile as well. Um, in this wallet, we can create invoices, a lightning invoice, and then we can pay invoices. So if I pay that, where are we? Okay, let's pay that. I have a serious issue with uh, lightning, lightning wallets, mobile wallets, and their QR code readers. Right, so if I pay that, there we are. We can see we've got the sats. So that went from my wallet of Satoshi to my node. Um, and then it works as a wallet. You can use it as a wallet. But as I said, each wallet has its own API credentials. Um, so one of these devices, like my ATM, for example, can have the admin key for this wallet and then can issue funds. But I know that it's only the amount of money someone can take from the ATM is limited to the amount of money which is actually in the wallet. And if I make a new wallet, um, then it will have its own API credentials. Uh, and then that means I could use that for my point of sale or something. But it's a nice way of, of, of separating out your funds on a node. Uh, this was another uh, issue which we had originally with Lightning Payments, was that um, node implementations, and even custodial solutions as well, like OpenNode, you would have one wallet and you would have one admin key, which meant that if you built an ATM and connected it to it, and then somebody got that admin key, they would get access to all of your funds, which kind of sucks. There was LND Hub the excellent LND hub, of course, but that only worked for LND, and I wanted to be able to have an ATM which would run on all the, solution, all the funding sources, all the different node implementations. So this is the basic wallet here. I can even export this wallet to my phone as well. Uh, so if I scan that QR code, I can get the wallet on my phone. 
Um, I can rename it, do all that sort of stuff, delete it. Uh, but then where the power of LMBits really comes in, I think, is the extension framework. So think of this as uh, a WordPress for your node. You have a Lightning node, you want to use it for some stuff, but what you want to use it for might be different to what somebody else wants to use it for. Say you're running a cafe and you need a point of sale, um, you can enable the TPRS extension and then you can open it um, and you can make a, 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 a easy, easily make a quick point of sale. Um, and you can denominate in a, a local currency. So if we go euro, because I'm European, despite what Farage thinks. Um, we can also have a tip wallet as well, in fact. So I can, if I make a tip wallet here and then select, what do we want? I want someone can do a 5% tip, 10% tip, 20%. This is optional, this tip bit, but we'll, we'll do it anyway. Create TPOS. Okay. So here we are. We have a point of sale. Now, this point of sale, you can... Um, give this to the people working in your cafe, and because it's dominated in euros, it's relatively easy to, you know, um, to understand for them when they're taking payments. Um, and then maybe they have, you know, this is their, their wallet, um, and we're going to give a 10% tip. And if I pay that. Okay. Oh. Right. Okay, payment sent. Um, and then you'll see that the uh, two payments went in. One payment went in for the LMPOS, and then we also had the tip go into the other wallet for our member of staff, maybe who um, has access to that wallet. Uh, what's cool about this is you can actually uh, print this QR code out, stick it on the bar, and just say to them, look, we now accept Bitcoin. Anyone comes in, just scan that QR code with your phone. You'll get up this point of sale. There's no way for this point of sale for them to be able to get access to the wallet. It's completely air-gapped from the wallet. Um, and then they can just run it in their phone and they can accept Bitcoin payments. So that's a really great solution just on its own. Uh, but then you start connecting it with other extensions. So maybe um, in Europe, for example, I think a lot of people are accepting Bitcoin Lightning payments. A lot of merchants are accepting Bitcoin Lightning payments. We're not quite at a circular economy place yet. Hopefully we will be one day and they can just go spend their sats wherever else, McDonald's or on Amazon or whatever. But currently, um, uh, they're probably doing it to accumulate some Bitcoin, yeah? So we have some other extensions to, to help that transition a little bit. So we have something here called the Bolts extension. And this uses a project called Bolts.exchange, which means that we can um, swap in and out of uh, Lightning payments to on-chain payments. So our cafe owner can uh, accumulate Bitcoin through payments and then... They can go in here and they can set up a swap and then swap it out to on-chain and send it to their, you know, exchange on-chain address or their hardware wallet address. Hardware wallet, so there's a good point. So some of these cafe owners, they, uh, they'll have a Kraken account and they'll just be sending funds to their Kraken account and they, they won't be quite aware of the security, implementate, the, the, the security issues with uh, doing that and really they should be self-custodial and have their own funds on a hardware wallet somewhere. So we want to make that a little bit easier for people as well. So we also have another extension, uh, which is called OnChain Wallet. And this is by um, one of our great uh, contributors, Vlad, Vlad Stan, who's here actually. And this is really incredible. Um, so if we go to OnChain Wallet and open him up. And then what we have here is um, a kind of watch-only wallet where we can manage funds but we can also attach uh, an on, uh, a hardware wallet to it and then give it an XPUB and then generate addresses and then use those addresses to send funds from the Bolts Exchange extension. So you start to be able to link up all these different extensions together. And we want to make this as easy and as cheap as possible for people. So um, I think just to make things more risky, let's, let's do another complicated demo, which will probably won't work. We'll try it. So here, I have a microcontroller, another one of these little ESP32-based microcontrollers. This is about $7 to buy. Um, ah, there is an issue. Oh, no, there's not an issue. I thought I'd have to unplug the screen, but I don't. I need a wire. Right, so what I'm going to do now, taking this off-the-shelf device, which is like seven quid, I'm going to turn this into a hardware wallet, all right? And I'm going to generate an XPUB on it. It's going to generate a seed on the, on the hardware wallet, generate an XPUB, um, and then give that to the on-chain wallet extension. Let's try it. See if it works. Okay. 
Um, so we can, uh, we can flash this directly from our browser. So if we copy this link here, we have to use Chrome because Chrome has this great thing called uh, web dev. So we can actually communicate with this microcontroller through the browser. We don't have to install any additional software. So if I plug that in there. Okay. Ooh, down for a second. Right, so there we are. So this is the, the, the stock uh, software which is flashed with the device when you buy it. Now what's nice about this, this is an off-the-shelf device and there's no way the company you're buying this off knows that you're going to be using it for a uh, Bitcoin hardware wallet, which I think adds immense value to a hardware wallet. Um, and uh, we're going to go, oh, this is the POS, sorry, on one. Sneak peek of what we'll be doing in a moment. So we're going to flash version 3 onto the device. Right, so I've plugged it in. Oh. And for some reason, the device isn't showing on the computer there. I think I've got some of these cables aren't data cables, they're just power cables. So I think I've got the wrong cable for that. Um, could you have a quick rummage? BC, BC, could you have a quick rummage in the back there? See if there's a, a USB C wire I can plug in which has data. Great. Uh, no, USB-C to USB, please. Thank you. Oh, good man, thank you. All right, so now if this doesn't work, I'll be very confused. All right, so again, the point is that we want to make everything as accessible and as easy to run as possible. Uh, and as cheap to make as possible as well. Like, you know, you, you encourage people to buy hardware wallets and store their funds on hardware wallets, but then those hardware wallets cost like, you know, 70, 80, 100 quid or whatever. And sometimes it's just out of the range of people's funds. Or they don't, I mean, they should always buy a hardware wallet, of course, but they don't feel they can justify that amount of money. Um, and there's two ways in which you can run this hardware wallet, in fact, um, in, you know, conjunction with the uh, on-chain um, extension. And that's... Uh, over the wire using USB, but you can also use it as an air gapped solution as well using SD cards. Let's try and get this thing fired. There we go. Yeah, so it's my cable. Right. Um, so here's the, the, the device. I'm going to connect to the device. It's connecting. And then notice as well, by the way, that it says do not use this for uh, on chain funds, use it for testnet only because it's still very new. Okay, so we're going to install it. Next. Install. So now we're installing the hardware wallet binaries from the browser to the hardware wallet. Before, in our hardware wallet project, it would require you to download the Arduino IDE and then install it through the Arduino IDE, but now you can just do it through the browser, so it makes it a lot easier, more accessible to people. And then also, there's a great um, uh, 3D printed case as well, which you can pop this in, and it really looks like a hardware wallet. Uh, which uh, BC made as well, which is great. So we're, we're installing that now, installing that binary. Wrapping up. Okay, come on, come on, come on. There we are, installation complete, fantastic. So now we have installed the hardware wallet on there. We've got some text pop up on the little hardware wallet. So now I can go to my, yeah, my um, uh, on-chain wallet software here, and uh, I can unplug it, plug it in. We have a security feature which gives you about nine seconds to connect the device. Oh, oh, wait there. As I said, you have to do this in Chrome. Okay. Um, oh, I've run out of time. Let's try again. Okay, connect. Here we are, cool. And now we have an encrypted pin. So we've connected to the device and we've got an encrypted pin there too. Okay. Um, I'm going to wipe the device. I'm going to put in a password as well. Secret password, password, pass, pass, 
Word. Yeah, I'm going to wipe the device. And then what that's going to do is it's going to clear the, the memory on the device, and then it's going to generate a mnemonic, and then from that mnemonic generate a private key, which is now on that device, okay? Uh, it's actually kind of cool as well, the entropy which it uses. So it takes the, um, the Wi-Fi noise, and I think the Bluetooth noise as well, I'm not sure, but the Wi-Fi noise, which is in the room, and then uses that to get the entropy. Um, this isn't an ideal hardware wallet for storing vast amounts of funds on, but it's a lot better than your cafe owner you know, storing their money on a, an exchange or on a phone wallet or something. Um, so, yeah, now, we, now I can log in. And if I want, I can put in a passphrase as well, but I'm not going to do that. All right, so now I'm logged in. Um, and when I'm logged in, I can, if I click on uh, where are we? show seed, I can go through. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a seed on here. And I can click through and then write that seed down somewhere safe. Um, and what I can do as well is I can pull the XPUB from this hardware wallet. Uh, cafe. Um, oh, wrong one. Um, from hardware device, here we go. And I'm going to go for a legacy XPUB. Cafe. All right, cool. So now I've got the XPUB from the hardware wallet. So we've just made a hardware wallet, pulled the XPUB from it into our extension. Um, and now, because this is an XPUB, so we, can, uh, we can't spend funds, but we can generate addresses so people can send us money. Um, so if I wanted to, maybe we should do this now. Uh, if I uh, create a new receive address and then copy that address. Oh, wrong button. Um, and then go to the Bolts exchange here. Actually, I'm going to funds. Let's send a decent chunk of change to this thing, shall we? What should we go for? 50,000 sats? What do you reckon? How much is that? Um, all right, so imagine that we've accumulated a bunch of payments. Okay, paid. There we are. Um, and now we want to send those payments to that on-chain address, which doesn't have to be this, you know, hacky hardware wallet we've just made. It could be your Trezor or whatever else. Um, you just need to give it an address. So, where are we? On-chain wallet. Here we go. And then, did it again. Uh, copy. And bolts. Here we go. We want to reverse swap it out, give it the on-chain address. How much do we want to go for? Let's go for 45,000. This wallet, please. Or is there a minimum? Oh, there's a minimum of 50. Let's try it. No, insufficient balance. So we need a float inside this balance, inside this wallet here. So I'm going to have to feed a little bit more. Let me give it 20,000. 20, Okay. Right. Give some more sats. Obviously, because of fees, there's a uh, there's a limit to that. So let's go fifty. One, two, three. Great verse swap out. So now what that's going to do is um, send fifty thousand sats to Bolt Stock Exchange, and then they're going to send us back. Um, on chain to our hardware wallet, the 50,000 sats. Um, so we just we need to wait a little while for that to clear. But we should see our oh, status completed here. So if we, where are we? Okay, here's our mempool info. Um, all right, so we'll give that a little while to, 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 to clear. And then if we go to the on chain wallet, hopefully, 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 I'm going to history. Scan blockchain. There we go. We can see the payment. So the payment's gone from Lightning, and it's swapped out to on-chain to our little device, minus uh, 800 uh, sat fee to Bolt Star Exchange. So what we're trying to show here is that um, it makes it very cheap. You know, that's a $7 device. And if you package it in a little 3D printed case, it's $10. You can give that to your cafe owner. And actually, the next... Um, update to the Bolts extension 
is to automate that process. So we'll say, when this wallet gets to 100,000 sats, automatically swap out to that hardware wallet. Um, and then, from that hardware wallet, they can manage their funds, um, and they can, they can send on-chain transactions as well, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can use it just like a, a hardware wallet solution. Um, so that's just, you know, three extensions sort of stitched together. We've got a whole bunch of extensions which do all sorts of different things. Uh, as I said, I will mention LNURL stuff because LNURL is uh, quite an important part of LNBits. We use it quite a lot. Do, hands up, how many people here know what LNURL is? Yeah, so I say probably about half the room, right? So early on with Lightning payments, we realized there was a little bit of friction when it came to what you could do with the Lightning Network. Like, if I'm going to pay you, you need to generate an invoice, and then I scan the invoice. Whereas with my... And that would mean that, like, my, my little claw game here, I would need to have a little screen on there which generates an invoice every time, and that kind of sucks. What I want is a static QR code like I've got there. So LNURL... Um, have we got the spec up? I think I've got the spec up here. Here we go. So LNURL is an agreement among wallets which means that a Lightning wallet can do a GET or POST request. So it can do a GET request to the server, and then what it might get back from the server, if it's doing an LNURL pay, is it'll get back an invoice, which then um, the wallet says, do you want to pay this invoice, and you just say yes. So for the user who's paying, they just scan a thing, and then it says, do you want to pay this? You say yes, please. But, you know, there's this back and forth between your wallet and the payment server, which allows that to happen. It's very simple, very straightforward, the... the um, uh, the request in which it fetches. It's just a small JSON. Um, so that's been able to do an LNURL pay, but you can also do what's called an LNURL withdraw, which is where you scan a static QR code, and then the server says, cool, send me an invoice for X amount. And then your wallet says, do you want to receive these funds? You say yes. And then it gives that invoice to the server, then the server pays it. But for the uh, user, their experience is they're just scanning a QR code and getting funds out of it. So let's have a little try of that, shall we? Let me put some more funds in here. So I'm going to do a bit of a SAT giveaway now. All right. So we see if we can push our node a little bit. Send some funds to it. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on. All right. So now, if I go to the LNURL withdraw extension, we can create like a link, which is well, a static QR code people can take funds from. Um, so connect to this wallet, link title, uh, ooh, faucet, I suppose. Um, min withdraw, say 1,000. So you can also set like a variable amount here, amount of uses, but. 10 uses? No, 100 uses. Time between withdrawals, a couple of seconds. Okay. Yes. Boom. All right. So now, if I get this up on the screen, if anyone scans that QR code, you can get your phones, uh, your, your, your wallets out if you want. If you scan that with your, you know, your Lightning wallet, you should be able to pull, um, whatever I said, like 1,000 sats um, each time you pull it. So, you know, help yourself get it out. It might take a while. Uh, for us to be able to leach this, leach this faucet. Um, so the, the bolt card which you got when you walked through the door, that has uh, an LNURL, with, LNURL withdraws on it. So when you go up to the machine and you tap the machine, the NF, like the beer tap, for example, you're giving it one of these LNURL withdrawal links. What's cool about the bolt card solution, though, by Coin Corner, is that that little bolt card, when you tap it, the NFC gives it enough power to create a unique hash. Because if we were to give a cafe or a beer tap this QR code, they could, every three seconds, they could take 1,000 sats until your wallet ran out of money. Um, I don't know if anyone managed to pull that. Let's have a little look. Oh, yes, looks like someone pulled it. This worked, did it? There we go. So we've got a couple of faucet, yeah, a couple of people draining that faucet there. Very nice. Um, but with, you know, with LNUR withdraw, you can specify different variables to, for, you know, different use cases, different needs. Um, so maybe you're at a conference and you want to give people, you know, 100 sats each just to get them going. Um, and 
click create vouchers here. Um, and then with this one here, we can actually go to print. And then we can just print these out. These are all unique, by the way. These aren't, so like, unlike the other uh, QR code we saw, um, these ones are unique. If we really study them, it's like where's Wally? Um, they are slightly different. Uh, so unlike the other QR codes we saw, these can only be used once. So everybody in the conference can have one of these and can scan it and can you know, get some free sats. Um, as I said before, a lot of people uh, who are building Lightning solutions might use Allen Bits in their software stack because all these extensions they have access to through, uh, through our API. So we have API information here about how you can do this programmatically, uh, but you can also, um, let's have a look here now. You can also access our Swagger docs, which we've got, and you can play around with it in there and then you know, figure out what you need to do to build your application. Um, on top of LM bits, and all the different extensions are, are documented there with all the different API endpoints. Uh, so it starts to become a pretty powerful solution. Um, so, but with LN URL, there, there are two things you can do. You can make a payment to a static QR code, uh, or you can pull funds from a QR code, which could be redeemable multiple times, or it could be redeemable only once, like with the bulk card solution, for example. Um, uh, but then you can actually like, marry those things together and create some interesting things. Also with LNURL, you have the, there's an LNURL, there's one for channels, for, and this is the original use case for LNURL, was to easily, quickly set up channels. Um, and then there's also an LNURL auth, which you can use your Lightning Wallet to uh, log into services, um, and it's, you know, it's like using a password or something. Uh, but we only have LNURL pay and LNURL withdraw built into LNBits. Uh, so I've got an extension down here. Let's turn this room into a casino, shall we? Why not? <laughs> I quite like this one, because this is, uh, I don't like gambling, but I think gambling software is really interesting to build. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Right, so we'll say there's a thousand sat, cost a thousand sat to play this game. Because I'm the bank, I'm gonna take a, I'm not gonna take a haircut. Okay, create sats dice. Oh, I didn't fill out that form properly, did I? Wallet, blah, blah, blah. Let's go 2%. Okay, create that dice. There we go. Right, so now we have a QR code, which we can print out. We can print this QR code out. You can scan it, and you've got a 1.5, you pay 1,000 sats, and you've got a 1.5 chance of winning uh, 1,500 sats. Um, but then you can also fiddle it a little bit if you want as well. So th with this extension, we could also build in some provably fair stuff into this so people could, there could be a proof which you get so you know that the casino is not ripping you off more than they you know, say they're going to rip you off. Uh, but what you could have with this is if you made like a high roller game and then printed it out, just print out this QR code, stick it in Paddington Station, any you know, swanky Bitcoiners walking past with loads of sats on their phones, they might play it, play the game, have a little flutter. Um, I like it because it's just gambling in a QR code. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but it's marrying up the two things. So if I play this now, this is an LNURL pay. You know, my, my, my phone is doing a get request to the server. It's saying, do you want to pay 1,000 sats? I'm saying, yes, please, I will pay 1,000 sats. Once I pay the 1,000 sats, I then get a link. I open the URL, and then, oh, I lost. But if I won, I would get a withdrawal, which I could actually withdraw the funds from. So, uh, pretty powerful stuff. What I like about the LNURL spec, um, a bit like Alan Bits actually, is it's, it's, you know, I just got the ball rolling with Alan Bits and then it very quickly brought in a lot of great developers. Um, and uh, they were developers who were actually building stuff in the real world for real world use case. Uh, and that's where all the things which are being built has, has come from. It's not why people are speculating what people might want. Well, maybe the Sats Dice thing is, but. The, the, most of it is built for real-world use case. Uh, and LNURL is exactly the same. It's a bunch of people, enthusiasts, Bitcoin enthusiasts, who want to use the Lightning Network, but they see these limitations which haven't been addressed yet. We have Bolt 12 in the works, which means we can have static QR codes and things like that. Uh, but I think there's always going to be value to essentially you having a server um, in between that payment where you can do some logic, which is what we're doing with the, the SAS dice thing.
And what else should we have a look at here? Oh, I tell you, I tell you what, we've got a nice little extension we can look at. Um, where has he gone? Okay, have I set this up? Yes, I have. Okay, so here's a nice one. So the idea is that you have this piece of software. It's the WordPress for your node. Say you're running a cafe and you want a jukebox. There's some things which legacy digital payments using Visa don't work for. Jukeboxes is one. You know, like we, we jukeboxes are fun. People have them. It's a way for people to passively make a little bit of extra income in their bar or in their cafe. Uh, what's cool about this extension is you can create it, connect it to your Spotify account. Let's have a little look. Right, so I can play a song. I can plug this into my speaker in my cafe or my bar. And then I can put this link, print this link out, put, it, put this QR code out, put it on a wall somewhere, say to people, scan this, and then you'll be able to use the jukebox. Open jukebox. Do you know what that is? It's because I set up for my, uh, my laptop, I think. Here we go. Oh. No. I feel like I've, I've, I've just picked one too many demos. <laughs> we could set this up from fresh. Uh, let's do it. All right, okay. Oh, I know. Bear with me. Okay. Uh, where are you, Spotify extension? Here we are, Spotify jukebox. I'm going to dox myself now. All right, I add Spotify jukebox. What should we call it? Cafe. Wallet to use. I want funds to go into this wallet, please. Price per track. Let's say 100 sats per track. Continue. Um, now I need to connect this to my Spotify account. So I'm going to open... Oh, issue. I'm in incognito. So that's not going to work. Okay, let's go. Right, let's try again. Add Spotify jukebox. Wallet to use this wallet. 100 sats per track. Okay. Um, would that just work? No, let me open the Spotify. So if you have a Spotify account, premium account, then... Oh, don't dox me. There we are, cool. Uh, create an app. What should we call it? Cafe. App description, blah, blah, blah. I understand, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, so I need this client ID. Oop. We tried to make this a little bit easier by adding a little GIF here so you know what to do. Okay. Um, and then we also need the secret. This is the thing I'm doxing myself with. You can access my, oh, wrong one. You can access my Spotify if you use that secret, so. Which is good that this isn't going out live. Right, all right, cool. Uh, don't save. Um, now I need to copy this. Open the Spotify application. Where are we? Four. okay, add that to there. Okay, save. All right, authorize access. Agree. Okay, cool. So now I've authorized access to Alan Bits to be able to access my Spotify account. There we are. Now I can see my device and I can see some playlists. I'm gonna go for this one. Create jukebox. All right. All right, cool. And now, hopefully, there we are, we'll behave a little bit. All right, so, uh, what can we play? Surfing USA, here we go. So pay 100 sats for this. Oh. Well, I haven't paid it yet, so it's not gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna have to pay this with a different wallet because I can't use my phone for this because my phone's currently playing songs. Okay, payment sent. There we are. So I've paid, and now, uh, Surfing USA should be the next track in my playlist. So if I click skip to next, next song, there we go, it worked. Um, so you just have a, a jukebox, a simple jukebox, which you could put you know, on a tablet somewhere, or you, people could access through a QR code. Um, but it's another way for a business to be able to, a cafe or a bar, to be able to passively just get some 
extra income. You know, that bar which has the, the point of sale, it has uh, the sats dice gambling in the urinals when people go to the toilet, and then it has a jukebox playing as well. Um, so it all kind of gets pre pretty cool. But that's just for the cafe use case. You might have, you know, uh, uh, you may be your, uh, uh, let's turn it off now. You might be a, um, a content creator, and you might be making videos, and you want a way to be able to receive payments while you're making your videos. So we have an extension for that as well, Streamer Copilot. Let's go for that. Access all the, do all the extensions, right? So say I'm a content creator, uh, trading bollocks. Right, okay. Uh, include an LNURL payment, yep. Uh, connect to this wallet. Uh, I'm not going to tick this because it's a bit cutting edge. Um, all right, so thresholds. So I'm going to select some little animations. I'm going to say if someone pays me 10 sats, it's going to show some confetti. If someone shows me 50, sends me 50 sats, then it's going to show a, a, a rocket. And then what should we have? Rick, Rick Astley for 100 sats. All right. We will add the ability for you to be able to add your own gifts to this, by the way, as well. And then if we go for a price, uh, show price as well, show power by LM bits, and then title, tip me. All right, create video co-pilot. Okay, so now if we click on this thing here. Oh. Again, I think this works best in Chrome or Chromium. Yeah, it does work best in Chrome or Chromium. Firefox. Need to catch up. Right. So I'm a video content creator. I have my OBS video streaming software. I can create a virtual webcam in OBS and connect it to a browser window. OK, this is going to be my browser window here. There I am. All right, I've got tip me. All right, OK. Let's see if this works. Oh, there we are. So the confetti seems to work. We have a WebSocket connection for the price there, so we've got a price feed. So this is the thing which we put through OBS. Excuse the poor quality of my... Did somebody just tip me? Oh, that was nice. Thank you. <laughs> someone, tip, someone tip 100, 100 sats, over 100 sats, and see if we get Rick Astley showing up. You cheapskates, come on. I'm amazed that you're... Phones can, uh, oh, someone, yeah, someone did Rick Astley. There we are, brilliant. So this gives instant feedback for, um, you know, your audience. They can, they can tip you and then have all this stuff happen. And they, they actually, with the, the cutting edge thing, which I showed you before with the uh, messages, you can also, some wallets, you can attach a message to a payment and then that'll sort of come up here as well, the message. Oh, look at this. This is very kind of you guys. Thank you. Let's close it. <laughs> Um, oh, you can also share screen as well, but I didn't show that. Um, uh, so yeah, again, uh, another, another use case for um, audience participation when they're consuming video content. I've got an example of this, actually. I wonder if I've got it open. Uh, it isn't connected to this. It's kind of merging a couple of different projects. So we're merging uh, the Switch project, which is in this claw game, and that LNURL pay type project. We're kind of merging them together to do something interesting. Uh, here we are. So this is a show we did where um, I had uh, a couple of QR codes set up in the show. So we have like this weekly panel show on World Crypto Network where we all talk about Bitcoin stuff. Um, in fact, Martin from General Bytes, he's here uh, uh, with his company um, in the, the showroom thing here. But anyway, so we had Three different QR codes. We had one, QR, one LNURL pay, which if you paid would blow smoke in my face, and then one which would slap me with a slapping machine, and then uh, you also had slapbacks. So when the wallet got to a certain amount, then it would make a with, you'd be able to withdraw those funds from the slapbacks. So just to show that I was doing it, you know, altruistically, and not doing it for profit. So here we are talking. And then one of our audience members, or a couple of our audience members, <laughs> then, then pay and they kick the shit out of me in the, in the video stream, which is pretty nice. But all this stuff, it's like the claw game. It's like a sweet machine or, wh or whatever else you, you build with Lightning Network, where you, you're playing around with these micro payments. 
It's like a goofy experiment, a goofy example of how you can use this technology. But then actually, it's very profound that somebody can send like a sub-penny amount through the internet and then have something happen on the other side of the world and then it be streamed through the internet without any private data being leaked. It's just a, a perfectly private payment. I think that's pretty profound, and obviously we all know that there's a lot of value in that, being able to do that. Um, but there's an example of, of, of how you can marry all this stuff together and do some, do some kind of fun. Got all these windows open. I think we need to start closing windows. Um, so where are we? Is this our main wallet we've been goofing about with? Yes, it is. Uh, how's our on-chain transaction going? Let's have a little look. Here we go. Oh, look, it looks like it's settled. That's pretty cool. Um, so now we could, if we wanted to, we could send those funds, on-chain funds, to somebody or to an exchange or something. Um, in fact, one of the, the, the first great implementations of a Lightning project I saw when Lightning first started to be used was by Async Eclair, and that was literally this, where it was just a site where you could accumulate Lightning payments and then have them output when they get to a certain amount to an on-chain wallet. They stopped the project, because I think it was kind of too early. They had that first mover you know, thing, traction, people get. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's, carry on, let's carry on on our journey through the extensions, shall we? Uh, if you have these bulk cards, which were given by Coin Corner, uh, they're the ones who... So I, I did like an LNUR, uh, LNURL withdraw NFC payment a few years ago, but al always the issue was you're just putting in a LNURL withdrawal on an NFC tag and then giving it to a merchant, and they can keep leeching that, which actually might not be a bad thing. So say if you know, I set up an LNURL withdrawal for $5 a month and I give it to Netflix, there we are, we have a direct debit. We've just mimicked legacy direct debit, great. But for me paying for my coffee, it's a bad thing. So Coin Corner, the, the real innovation there with the bulk cards was getting that NFC tag to do a little computation and create a hash so that LNURL withdrawal link is unique and can only be used once. Um, so we built, after they'd done that, we built uh, the ability for you, be able, for you to be able to mint your own cards in LM bits as well, uh, which I think some of the, um, uh, the, 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 the there's a couple of, couple of people here are using actually for making their own bulk cards um, and then are using with uh, LNT Hub as well, uh, which is really nice. So yeah, so we have, we have an extension for that too. Um, the, there's a, an accompanying app which you need to use, the NFC tag app by a guy called Rob who's actually here as well. So we've got all the greats here today. Um, but there you can create a bulk card and then mint the bulk card and then you can use it to make payments uh, from your, your node or from somebody else's LM bits if you're using somebody else's LM bits. But it really is like all this stuff is just people contributing things which they find useful and then in the great spirit of open, free and open source, everybody else can make use of those, uh, this, that functionality. This is a nice one which I hadn't even thought of was invoices. Um, Lee quite recently submitted this as a PR, where we can just, you know, connect to a wallet, select a currency, because we're going to, you know, we, wanna, we need stability for the thing which we're, we're, we're paying for. Open, company name, first name, blah, blah, blah. Okay, add an item. What should we add? Okay, uh, Welsh cakes. Okay. And they're three quid. Ooh, for some wash cakes. Uh, create invoice. So now we have an invoice, um, and we can give this invoice link to somebody, and they can make a payment. As well as that, we can, again, print it out. Somebody can scan that QR code and can make payments um, uh, to that QR code. Uh, what's, what's nice, actually, is you, can, you don't have to pay the full amount. I don't think you have to pay the full amount. I think you can just pay a fractional amount, and then, yeah, there we are, generate an invoice, and then just pay it down slowly. So a great useful extension I hadn't thought of because I haven't got a business or service where I need to issue invoices to people who are going to pay me in Bitcoin, but this guy Lee did, um, and then he contributed it to the project. Um, let's have a look what else have we got. Work our way through. Ba -ba -ba -da -bum. Bless go, Matt. So there's a great ACM project out of Prague where you can link your LM Bits account to the ATM. In fact, that's what influenced this ATM here because it's, it's completely offline. 
Um, the way it works again is it's got a little secret and it generates an LNUR withdraw. So you put coins in, it generates an LNUR withdraw, you can scan it and you can get the payment. Uh, but it means that the ATM can be offline so you can just go stick it up anywhere in a forest or something and then have people pay for things. Actually, that influenced this thing here, which is an offline vending machine. Let's see if this is working. This is pretty cool. Let's have a little, there we go. So uh, this is a completely offline vending machine. Um, let's see if we can get this thing working. And this, again, is using uh, LNURL pay. But because that server's in the middle, when the payment's made, what happens is I select a, a product, so I'm gonna go for number two. It's gonna give me a little QR code and LNURL pay. When I selected that product, product it generated a four-digit pin and then encrypted the pin, put the pin inside that little LNURL pay, okay? So then when I scan it to pay it, 117 sats, so yeah, two, two cents. I get a link as a receipt. I open the link and it's the pin. So what's happened is, I, by scanning that LNURL pay, I did a get request to the server, handing the encrypted pin to the server, and then the, the server then gave me back that pin as a receipt decrypted. So now I can input that pin, five, seven, seven, nine, and then it dispenses the product. Um, but it means that this uh, vending machine can be, complete, can be completely offline, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. Actually, it kind of came out of conferences, because I'd go to conferences with a vending machine, and then the Wi-Fi always sucks, so it can't connect to it. And then I remember the Blesco Matt thing, they did a thing offline, I thought well, maybe I could do it offline as well. And then that's kind of where this concept came from. But I had this, in, there's an entire scene of people out there in the world um, on the internet called Dark Vend. And it's like this holy grail for dark vending where you can put contraband in a vending machine, not have to go to the vending machine to take the cash out. People can come and pay for the products, and as long as it pays for the vending machine and the products inside the vending machine, then, uh, yeah, it has to have sort of minimal human intervention, I suppose if there was one restock the, the vending machine. Uh, but the dark vend people say that by doing that for contraband, um, it, you get rid of a lot of violence and stuff, and it's, it's, they have some good arguments. I didn't build it for that, but, you know, they reached out. In fact, they started reaching out with technical questions, and I was a bit like, oh, wait there, I'm not, like, tech support for gangsters here, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I felt like I was going to get Charlie Schremmed. <laughs> um, right, so what else have we got? Offline. So one of the great innovators and one of the great contributors to Alan Bits, uh, and Alan Bits would, wouldn't be what it is if, without him, was, is Fiat Jaff, who got involved with the project. He was the first contributor after me, I think, uh, along with Eneco as well, one of our original contributors, um, who also came up with the LNURL spec, hence why we have a lot of LNURL stuff in our software. Um, but he made this offline shop extension uh, and this is where, say you're a market trader, um, somewhere where you have intermittent uh, internet and um, you want to accept Bitcoin payments and you want to be able to verify payment without internet access um, of, a, of a, you know, a lightning payment, for example. Uh, more Welsh cakes, please. Brief description, blah, 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 image. Um, what's this? Oh, I'll do. Item price, 20 sats. Okay, add item. Here we are, nice. Now I can print those QR codes out. Here we go. Um, and there's a static QR code somebody can make a payment to. If I make a payment, so say I go to my, I'm in a market and I'm selling Welsh cakes, and then somebody comes along, they want to buy some Welsh cakes, I'm completely offline, right? Um, and they scan, they make the payment. Right, okay, and then once it's paid, just similarly, I get a, a URL, I open the URL, and it gives me, uh, it gives me a word, albatross, all right? So I say that to the merchant, albatross. Um, and then the merchant, on the merchant side, they have uh, this word list. And as long as the, the payer is the next word on the word list, they can verify payment. So this doesn't scale to like a big shop, but for someone in a market stall, as long as they have this word list, it's an extra layer. I mean, somebody can verify payment by saying, look, I paid. Um, but then to be also have to say this word, you know, which you can then check on your list or you can memorize the list, it's kind of a nice little solution. And again, this was because there was actually somebody in the market who had crappy Wi-Fi, crappy internet, and they wanted to be able to sell stuff offline. And you know, I, I think they're using it for that right now. Um, 
But that kind of innovation of being able to send things back as receipts with LNURL uh, spurred on a lot, of, a lot of development. One of those developments, in fact, is our point of sale project. So we have a cafe owner. They're using phones to accept Bitcoin payments. They've got their little hardware wallet as well, which they're accepting Bitcoin payments on. Um, but then the people in the cafe, you know, the, 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 the barristers, they start getting annoyed that they have to use their phones all the time for these payments. And they're getting a lot of payments through. So they want a dedicated device. All right? So this is an off-the-shelf device built by a company called LilyGo. It's the same people who made this microcontroller, by the way. It's a nice microcontroller. Um, and they're about $15. And again, we've got a great little uh, 3D printed case. Which is gone. Oh, there it is. We have a great little 3D printed case which you can pop these in. Um, we have about 50 of these. And we'll be building these in a workshop later on today or tomorrow. Um, in fact, there's, a, uh, um, uh, there's an event this evening uh, which we'll be building these in, and then we'll be building them at the conference as well. So you can put that little device inside the box with a little LiPo battery, a little battery, and then you have like, you know, a $20 point of sale. And what's cool about it is uh, using this concept of using LNURLs, we can now make this offline. Before, you would have to buy the product download the Arduino file, and then flash the device from your Arduino IDE, and it was kind of quite convoluted. Uh, but again, thanks to our great contributor, Vladstan, uh, we now have uh, this incredible, where are we? Tie myself in knots here. Um, let's close this one. We now, we're now able to do this just through the browser. Um, so uh, if I go for, do I need the test version or the stable version? I think I need the test version. No, stable version. Right. Um, I'm going to flash the device. So connect to the device. This is my point of sale is now plugged in. I'm going to flash it with my point of sale binary. I'll erase it as well, see if this works. Take a swig of beer while it's flashing. What I'd quite like to see um, and I think we'll probably end up doing it if nobody else does it, is just a, a collection of resources of, okay, now, you know, El Salvador is accepting Bitcoin. This is how, using uh, an Allen Bits install and then $100 worth of investment, you can create a bunch of point of sales, give them to local shops, and they can use them, and then the funds go through your Allen Bits install, and then you just charge a transaction fee and make a little cottage industry. I'd like to see that happening. Uh, okay, so we we're erasing the, the memory inside the device now, and then soon we should be uh, uploading the binary to it as well. Uh, but this just makes, like I said, building that Uncle Jim model a lot easier, um, uh, or building a little business, a little cottage industry. Uh, and I think, I think that's how we uh, spread, because um, there were a few people who wanted to, like, buy thousands of these things and then distribute them all around El Salvador. And I was like, well, actually, this is probably the way we do it. We just make it a nice, clean-cut business model for little tech-savvy people to be able to just build something out, a small cottage industry um, onboarding their local community. And then the you know, Bitcoin lightning will propagate. The payments will propagate through. Uh, right, so, yeah, so we're uploading the binary onto the device. And this is a game changer, because before, like, as I said, if you wanted to do this yourself, you would have to like download the Arduino IDE, uh, which is also okay if you want to do that, because you can verify the libraries and everything else we're using. Um, at some point, we will have a hash, like a, a checksum or something, uh, which you can then link back to the, the repo so you can tell that nothing fishy has happened um, in transit. But if you're using this as a point of sale, there's not much damage someone can do with it. Uh, right, are we uploaded? There we go. Nice. Now, the, oh, there we are. Looks like we flashed, uh, got the firmware on there. Now, this little device is actually a little bit more uh, feature rich than just a point of sale. And I'll show you that now. Um, so if I go to, Bobber da Bum, where is he? I'm going to close these because I'm just confusing myself. New. There we go. Uh, another extension we've got to help, you know, 
setting these devices up makes them a little bit easier, we've got something called LNURL device. So I'm going to enable that. I'm going to open it. And then, whoop, clicked on the wrong one. Um, and I'm going to create a new LNURL device instance. It's going to be my point of sale. Okay, connect it to that wallet. Uh, profit, I'm going to say, I'm going to add an extra 5% profit on here. So I'm going to rip, rip my customers off. Okay. Nope, I didn't fill out all the fields again. We need like a little error thing or something to come up there instead. Me having to do it multiple times. Uh, Euro. Oh, too slow. There we are. I'll do. Um, here we go. Uh, this just gives us a little string. We click on that. It's copied. Now, because you have to use. Let me close this. We have to use Chrome for this. So we start this. I can go to config. All right, it tells me to reset it holding button one. Okay, so I'll do that. Hold button one. All right, so that sets up the. Uh, Did I do the test? I need the test version, isn't it? I need to flash it with. All right, let's try that again. Being able to config through the, uh, through the browser uh, is a, a new feature, so it's in the test version. So I flashed it with the wrong version there, which is kind of annoying. Um, let's refresh that. Let's do, go again. Test version. Oh, the. There we go. There we are. All right, okay. So we're going to have to flash that thing again. Right, so um, the, while that's doing that, install. While that's doing that, if I explain, there we are. Um, if I explain this extension here. So this extension here is basically doing what that offline um, uh, shop extension was doing or what the, um, the vending machine is doing where it's, uh, it's, we're gonna, when we make a payment to the device, it's going to generate a four-digit pin inside the device at the point of sale, encrypt it, stick it inside that QR code. When we scan the QR code with our wallet, it's passing it to the server, and then it's giving the, the uh, decrypted pin back as a receipt. What it means is that you can have an offline point of sale. Um, now, like you lot, I, I, I love it in Bitcoin, and in Lightning, when we, we're able to compete with or, or produce something which um, rivals and, 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 and can have the same functionality as legacy payments, such as the bulk card thing, you can do an NFC payment, a tap and pay payment. And it's as secure as it is, it's secure as it is when, you, uh, when you do an NFC payment with um, uh, you know, tap and pay, normal uh, credit card tap and pay. Uh, but, but then I like it when we surpass. Like, so currently, you, know, you don't have offline points of sales at bars and in cafes and stuff, whereas with this we can create an offline point of sale. How much time have I got? 11 minutes over, good God. I've got another hour's worth of content. <laughs> right, so anyway, I think the best way for me to show you this is if you just come to the workshop. We've got about 50 of them to make. Um, I'm going to quickly wrap up. But, so we've kind of looked at where we were where we started from, sorry. We looked at where we are with all these crazy extensions, but then obviously it just keeps rolling forward. You know, this is the, the WordPress for your nose, so we just keep getting all these extensions piling in. So I'm going to quickly, quickly uh, look through um, a couple of the PRs we've got coming in, uh, which is uh, uh, really mind-blowing. So we've got uh, one PR which is coming in from um, a project called Standard Sats. Uh, standard sats, there's an exchange called Collider where you can do short leverage positions and you can keep a peg. So um, you could technically offer a, a stable coin. You could offer a stable peg in your wallet. You could say, I want there to be £100 worth of Bitcoin in this wallet and then there will just be £100 worth of Bitcoin and it will just magically keep a peg to a few percent. Um, but another extension we have coming out, uh, I've, I'm sure you've all heard about the Charmy Cash stuff with the great work which Obi and Justin Moon have been doing with Fedimint. Well, we also have uh, one of our main developers, Kali. Um, he's building uh, an eCache called, um, uh, called Cashew. And we also have an extension for that as well. So if you run LMBits, you will also be able to um, uh, 
that's a shame we're going to whisk through this stuff. You will also be able to mint your own eCash, um, and then your users can use that eCash, which then gives you as a custodian deniability as to what they're using those funds for, because with an eCash, you don't, you know, it's, it's a bare asset, you don't know what they're using those funds for. It's still custodial, but it's, it's kind of a nice extra layer we can add onto Bitcoin for some extra functionality uh, for people to be able to use. So we have, uh, and then you marry up the standard SATS extension with the eCash extension, and I can create a, 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 a Welsh pound eCash, um, and I can have my wallet peg the funds in that wallet to the British pound or something, or USD, um, and then, uh, yeah, I can, I can create a stable coin as a custodian, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's still up to me to be able to, you know, keep that as a stable coin or not. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap up. There we are. We're finished. Um, but yeah, I think, that's, I think that's pretty much... Oh, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, yeah, we'll also have a, a shop and stuff where you can buy some of these devices as well. That'll be linked to Alan Bits. But yeah, play around with the software, run it yourself, play around with the demo server. Don't put too much, too much money on the demo server because I will exit scam one day. Um, but, so, uh, but yeah, play around with the software. It's very, very useful, a lot of fun. And uh, uh, join us on the Telegram group, t.me backslash Alan Bits. Thank you, everybody.